All right, so I want to officially welcome you to this thumbnail-a-thon where we're going to learn how to generate thumbnails for learn.wordpress.org. And I hope the thumbnail-a-thon wasn't, wasn't too cheesy of a title. I just was kind of inspired and there you go. All right, so what is the whole point of this? What are we doing here? I want to give you some context on this project. So here we are at, oh, and sorry, I also want to quickly introduce myself for those watching the video. I'm Catherine Presner, and I'm coming to you from Montreal, Canada, and I am working full-time uh, helping the training team and doing all kinds of projects with learn.wordpress.org and elsewhere, and I'm sponsored by Automatic, and I've been working with WordPress since 2008. I also want to welcome Laura Adamonos, who has kindly agreed to uh, be my trusty co-host. I want to give a quick intro. Hey everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Laura. I am the uh, training team rep. Uh, I've only been doing WordPress for two years, and but I'm so I'm constantly learning and improving my skills. So awesome, awesome. I also want to mention that you can ask questions in the chat box in Zoom, and Laura will be, Laura will be keeping track of those. To make sure we answer them all either live or uh, live over the video or in text. And yeah, all right, I'm gonna jump in. So here we have learn.wordpress.org. And this is a repository of materials to learn about WordPress. Not only learn how to use WordPress, but also learning how to uh, teach WordPress, give a lesson on WordPress. Now, this whole site is being overhauled right now. And if you are logged into your wordpress.org account, you'll see this little banner that says preview the new theme. And if you click that, you'll get a sneak peek as to what this site is about to look like. And this should be launching mid-July is the current ETA. So I'm gonna click preview the new theme and this is what it's gonna look like. It's going to match the updated areas of the rest of wordpress.org a lot better. And it's also going to highlight what we're calling learning pathways. So there's gonna be four different target audiences, those who develop with WordPress, those who use WordPress, and those who design for WordPress and who want to contribute to WordPress. Right now, there's only the developing and using learning pathways ready, um, but they're here. And then below that, we're, we have courses, which are a collection of lessons so if you take the beginner WordPress developer course, you'll see there's a collection of lessons. So lessons make up a course, all right? And then if we go back below courses, and if we wanna see all courses, there's a link to all the courses, and you'll see these little graphics. These are the famous thumbnails that we were talking about and that the whole point of this um, workshop is to help fill in the blank spots. So this one here, this is called the fallback image. So if there isn't a cute little thumbnail for a course or a lesson or another type of learning content, this is the default graphic. So our goal is to have as many custom cute little thumbnails as possible. So a whole bunch of them have already been made and you'll see, you see some of them here. I know there's someone on our call today, Rico, who has helped create some of these and they look uh, great. Um, below courses, we also have lessons. So here's what it looks like when we don't have the custom thumbnails. It looks a little boring, right? <laughs> so we want to try and get rid of uh, a lot of these. And we can see all the lessons here. So two weeks ago at WordCamp EU, we had volunteers on Contributor Day help make some of these graphics and they look really cool. Like Rico, who I mentioned, created these cute custom screenshots to incorporate. And there's a whole bunch of cute thumbnails that are now in use. And so what I'm going to do today is show you how to make these thumbnails. Because the cool thing is we have a tool to do this. We don't have to do these from scratch. We have a really cool tool created by um, um, Francisco, Vera, and I'm going to show you how to use it. All right. And so to just to show you how this is going to work, I'm going to show you how to use the tool. I'm going to show you where we are tracking where all these thumbnails are going to go. So basically on this site, I showed you that we have different content types. We've got courses up here. 
we've got lessons, and we've also got tutorials, um, which are not being highlighted on the new site as such. They're going to be converted to lessons. We're, we're narrowing down the number of content types that we have from four to two courses and lessons. Um, but you can see here that tutorials um, have some thumbnails. And so what we have is this spreadsheet. Now I wanna ask how many people, are? is there anyone on this call who is not in the WordPress Slack instance? Because that is where the links to these documents are. And if everyone on this call is in WordPress Slack, I'm not gonna put these URLs in the Zoom chat. Is there anyone on this call who's not in the WordPress Slack instance? Oh, Stanford has keeps having trouble with the link. Okay. Maybe, let's see. Okay, there's a couple of people who are not. All right. Well, we won't, we're not going to walk you through how to get into Slack today, but what I will do then is share the um, Okay, so I'm going to share a couple of links. Uh, a couple of links. Make.wordpress.org slash chat. This is how to get into Slack. So don't worry about doing this now on the call because I want your eyeballs to be focused on what we're doing here. Um, for those of you, so if you're having trouble getting into the Slack, Stanford, um, maybe Laura could help you with this, depending how things go, depending how much uh, we need to uh, how many questions there are in, in the chat, but otherwise maybe you could reach out, maybe you could reach out to me on the meetup event. Um, you could send me a direct message through meetup and I can try and help you get into Slack after the call. And for those who are not, this is how to, and who, for those who have never tried before, this link that I just shared is how to get into Slack. And so Laura Hartwig said, I'm in Slack, but I don't know where the links are. So if you go to the channel called training, so number sign or hash, hashtag training, if you go up in the bookmarks in that channel, there's a bunch of things pinned and then it says team website, get started. And then there's, depending how wide your window is, there's there, you might see three dots. You're looking under the three dots or if it's just right there, there's a little folder icon and it says thumbnail project. Inside thumbnail project, you'll have the links to the Google Drive that I'm going to show you and the content tracking spreadsheet. And all of this is explained in this post, which I will link to. This outlines everything you need to get going on this. So you may have already seen this post, but this outlines everything we're going to go over. So if you pop into the training team channel, if you are in Slack, if you look under the three dots, or if you look for the words thumbnail project, you will see the links to all these documents, but I'm also going to, I'll share the link to the spreadsheet here. Um, I won't share the link to the drive yet because I would prefer that everyone, um, that everyone who's uploading thumbnails into the drive is actually part of the Slack so I can reach out if there's any issues. All right, okay. So this is, this is where we're keeping track of all the thumbnails that need to be done. Um, and whether they've been done or not. So I'm going to go through uh, the spreadsheet, how this works. So this is the title of the lesson. So for example, I will show this to you right here. Um, let's go to lessons, see all lessons, and I'm going to search for a plugin API hooks. Okay, so this is the lesson. So that's the title in this first column. This is the author. These are already pre-populated. Pre you, you won't have to do anything with this, but it's just to know the name of the lesson that you're looking at, who did it, and then thumbnail by. So if you see the name of a person in thumbnail by, you can, you can move on. That means that someone has already claimed this. Some, someone has either already made the thumbnail or is going to be making the thumbnail. And when the thumbnail has been done, what I want you to do, I'm just gonna show you an example here. You can see all the ones Rico has done for, for the tutorials. You are going to upload your thumbnail into the Google Drive. So we have three folders. We have a folder for the courses thumbnails, folder for the lessons thumbnails, and folder for tutorials. Today, we're gonna to focus on lessons. 
All right. So in lessons, you will basically you will scroll down and you will look for a blank field here. You will put your name in there. So like that, that's me. And then once you've uploaded it into um, just by dragging it into here, you will click the three dots. You will say share, copy the link. I'm going to go through all this again, by the way. I'm just sort of giving you an overview of what we're going to do. And you paste it in. So that's the content spreadsheet. But let's get to the fun stuff. Let's get to actually making these thumbnails. How does this work? So we have a whole tool called the thumbnail generator tool. So the thing you need to know to use this tool are you need a Figma account. So again, this is also in the, in the post. If you don't, or if you haven't had a chance to create your Figma account, no problem. I'm gonna walk you through what to do once you've created your Figma account. But creating a Figma account is free. Um, and you can go to figma.com to do that. I will copy that in here. So if you haven't done that yet, you can do that um, anytime doesn't have to be while we're on this call. And there's two ways to use Figma. Figma is a graphics tool. And I, I knew it as a way to create, you know, mockups or wireframes or prototypes of a piece of software. But what I didn't know is it's also a tool that can do a lot more things. And we're going to see this very cool use of Figma for creating these thumbnails in a moment. And Figma can be run right in the browser. So I'm using the browser based version here. So I can sort of go back and forth easily between different tabs. But if you want, there's also a Figma app, uh, which can be run on multiple platforms. So you can download that and run it on the app if you prefer. And there's also a whole guide to, to doing this. So if, if you, you know, you don't have to read it now, you may have read it before this call. Um, but I go step by step through how to use this tool in general to create any kind of graphic. What we're going to do here on this call is show how to specifically to make graphics for the new site. All right. So if you get off this call and you don't remember how to use the tool at all, you can come back to this guide and it walks you through it. And there's also a video. All right. OK, so those are really the things you need to, to get set up. You need to be uh, you know, in your Figma account and you need to have the link to the generator open. Um, and the generator is here. So the generator is hosted in this, um, the generator is hosted, it's kind of like a, uh, like a host, like a web host, but it only hosts Figma files. It's called the Figma community. And again, not something I knew about before this project, but it's super cool. That means that we don't have to host this generator anywhere special. Figma is hosting it for us. So I'm going to show you an example of how to make one of these thumbnails. So I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet. I'm going to look at, um, actually, let me do one in English just to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to do this one here, preparing your block plugin for distribution. All right. Okay. I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is highlight the name of this course. So I'm highlighting it and I'm copying it. So command C or control C. Then I'm going into the thumbnail generator. So remember when we looked, so you see that there's all different styles of thumbnails, all right? These ones down here, you can ignore. These are for particular uses, and I'm going to zoom in more. The ones down here are for special uses for events and the WP briefing and for online workshops and developer hours. We're not using those. We're going to use the ones above. And you'll see that there's different styles. These are called templates. Each one is a different template. And you can pick pretty much any one you want, except the one that is just the person's face. Because for these courses and lessons and tutorials, we're not putting the person's name who created the, the content because sometimes it's, we're just de-emphasizing the, the creator in these thumbnails. So don't choose this one um, or this one. But you can choose any of the others, and we're going to, or this one. Anywhere, any of the ones where you see a gigantic face, don't don't choose that one. <laughs> the ones where you see a little face, those are okay because we can hide the faces, and I'll show you how. So you'll see that some of them have a picture of the editor, and that stays there. These are just pre-made graphics with a picture of the editor. 
Where the ones where you see this picture of a building, these you can swap out the picture of the building with your own picture. So for example, let's say, let's say I want to choose this one here. All right. I'm going to zoom in a little even more. Okay. So I'm going to, I want this one. So what, what you do is if you click on each element, you'll see that things become highlighted on the left hand side. I know this is this part is probably a little difficult to see, but you will be able to see it when you're using this tool. This is called a component. A component is a chunk of content in Figma. And this is a tiny little arrow which you can open up to see what's contained inside. And as I hover over, you'll see that the different parts get highlighted in purple. So I'm gonna click on the text block. This is in a way a little similar to the block editor in WordPress. If you think about it, it's chunks of content are uh, like the blocks in WordPress. Maybe maybe I'm pushing the, the, uh, the analogy, but I think it's kind of similar. So what you're gonna do here is on, if I click in here, what you can do is you can highlight this text just like you highlight text in, in a word processor or in any other place. And I'm going to paste in the text that I copied from the spreadsheet. So if we go back here, you'll see it's called preparing your block plugin for distribution. Paste it in and try not to change the way anything here is spelled unless you really think you see a typo, in which case you can ping me in Slack and let me know. Um, but we've tried to go with WordPress style, which is capitalizing very specific words in a specific way. If you think something is a mistake, let me know, but otherwise just copy paste it from this green column here. All right, so we've pasted that in. Now, we don't want the faces here because we are not using faces. Um, we're not using faces in the uh, in these. So what you can do is you can you can open up these components till you see the faces and it says here faces. And there's a little eyeball here. Again, this might be very small on your screen and I apologize, there's no way to zoom in on this. But if you click this little eyeball, those faces disappear. In an earlier version of my guide, I, uh, I said you can delete the faces, but I think it's better just to hide them. That way, if you are using this for another purpose later and you want them back, it's easy to just unhide them. You toggle this eyeball. So we remove the faces, we leave the WordPress icon, but we don't want this picture. So we want a different picture. And you know, pictures are optional. Some of these templates don't have pictures at all, like um, this one here, there's no picture. This one here, there's no picture. This one here is no picture. So you can use one without a picture. You can also use one with, with the block editor already there. I would say use the block editor one when the content of the course is somewhat relevant to the editor. I mean, we're not strict about this. It's fine if, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, you're, if the, course or the lesson is about something else, you can still use the thumbnail with the block, but use your own judgment for that. So going back here, in the guide, I, su I suggested, sorry, it's too many posts open. Um, I suggested that if you want to find a picture down below, I talked about finding photos. You can find them from, I suggested a few different sources. Some of these sources, when you find a photo, it does say, you know, a credit is required. So try and find, because we don't have a spot built in for credits, try and find one that doesn't require a credit. Um, so, you know, you might want to do a play on word and just type in the word blocks and say, oh, uh, something with blocks, you know, or a blocky type of building. I mean, use your own judgment. Some of these metaphors are, are overdone, <laughs> but, um, you know, oh, so I didn't want to save. I wanted to download. So you download the picture. Um, oh, I think I've downloaded too many and now it's, oh, that was a paid one. Yeah. Pexels builds in free, uh, Pexels mixes in paid images. No, I clicked on the paid one. Okay. Ignore what I just did. So you want to focus on <laughs> I got sucked in by I got sucked in by the page section. So here's one of blocks. I'm going to download this, and I'm going to accept the cookies, and I'm going to try and it's giving. Okay. Now it's not letting me download. Okay, so um, 
you, you click on the picture here, and then on the right-hand side, if you open up this, this uh, component, it's a little tricky to find because it's, you're, you're looking for the image component itself, and it's in, it might be inside another component. You see this word image here. You click on this, and you click choose image, and I'm going to just um, find an image from somewhere, and you probably won't. I'm going to just for a picture, and this is actually going to be a picture of a person. Pretend this is a picture of blocks. Sorry, I thought we were going to find an image together, but I'm just going to go with something easy. Um, and then once you're done, once you're happy with the, the picture you found and the way it looks, you're going to export. So down here, you're going to click export and it's going to prompt you to save it. And then once you have saved it, you are going to, oh, now we got, now we got the, <laughs> sorry, I don't often use Chrome. So I think that's, that was the issue. That was a me problem. I usually use Firefox. Okay. So once you have uh, exported the image, you save that on your hard drive and then you drag it into the appropriate folder. So like I said, you have three folders, one for courses, lessons and tutorials. Since we're focusing on lessons, um, everything you do today or in the, in the upcoming days should go into lessons. You'll just drag it in here. And when you drag it in, before you drag it in, the convention that we're using is to put the, the year, the month, and the day, and then the name of the course. So my file would be called, for example, uh, it would be called, um, let's see, it would be called, let me see if I can make a dummy file for you. One second. It, so it's 2024.06. Two five, and then preparing your block plugin for distribution and use dashes instead of spaces. So the download folder that I'm referring to is this Google Drive. I'm just going to show you what it looks like once we've added. So there is a Google Drive and to get the link to the Google Drive, it's in the training team channel in the thumbnail project bookmark up at the top of the channel. So you'll need to be in the WordPress Slack in the training channel to get access to this folder. And that's because I really want everyone who's working on this project to be reachable in some way. Um, so if you're not already in the WordPress Slack and you want to, I see a few people have joined, that's awesome. So if you people join the, tra the training uh, team channel. Um, if you want to work on this project, um, if you can join the Slack and then pop into the training channel, and then you'll have access to this drive. Again, I just want to have everybody be reachable and um, active in the channel so that I can reach out if there's any issues. Um, so this is what your file name will look like. It's going to have the year, the month, the day, and then the, the full name of the course with dashes in between the words. And that is so we can keep track when I download this and know what, what this is for without having to open the file. And it's just a nice organized way to keep track of these. And then once it is here, you will, I showed you this part before, but we click on the, we, we click on the three dots, we go share, copy link, and then paste the link here. And this is this is not a real one. So if you go here and click on it, you're going to see this is not it's not the right they're not the right uh, file. But this is to show you how it works, and then and then that's it. And then you can move on to the next one. Now, one important thing that I want to show is that you know there's all different color schemes. The idea is that we don't want the same color and the same template next to each other because if if all of this page is uh, the same format, it's not as interesting as if it's if it's varied. So one cool thing in the, in the um, tool is that most of these have the option to change color schemes. So if I 
click on this template, for example, you can, if you look for the word color, this is the pomegranate gradient color. And if you want a different color scheme, you can choose from the light gradient or the blue color or the dark blue color. And so by varying which of these templates we're all using and which color scheme we're choosing, we're going to have a nice varied look to the page. So uh, let's see, let's look for the word block. And you see here, most of these are pink. I mean, it's obviously it's impossible to predict what people are going to search and what's, what things are going to be side by side, but you can see there's a, there's a variety of colors and layouts and, um, you know, the idea is to just not all have us using the same template. So if you're doing thumbnails, you know, try and vary the templates that you're using. Um, so not just this one or not just this one, um, try to vary. So are there any other questions I'm seeing here? Someone saying not seeing three dots when in Slack training channel. So yes, Laura is pointing out if, if your Slack is wide enough on your screen, you might not see three dots. You might see the words thumbnail project right there, but it is the very last thing in the row. So it might be, um, so you're looking, the first thing you'll see in Slack is number sign or hashtag training. And then below that, you should see something that says one pinned team website, get started, GitHub learn repo, Google drive folder, online workshops. And then the last thing is the three dots or the word thumbnail project. So let me know, Eileen, if you see it there. Stephanie has said, how do I join the Slack team? I'm I got it. I got okay. the link. Okay, Laura's on it. Thank you. Um, so yeah, if you're not in Slack, um, you can follow the link that Laura is posting and that will help you connect your wordpress.org account with your Slack account. And so you will, you will need a wordpress.org account because yeah. that makes you a full participant in the WordPress project, and then you will link your WordPress.org account to your Slack account. And if you if you've you know you miss some of these links, they are all linked off the Meetup event. So off the Meetup event, I've linked to the um, steps to prepare and to this guide. So that should all be um, in there. Oh, Stanford's gotten to Slack. Awesome, glad to hear that. I know it can be tricky sometimes to, uh, to, to um, those steps can be tricky. So I'm glad to hear. So um, just to recap, we have several documents. We have the content tracking spreadsheet where we are gonna focus on lessons. You're gonna claim which thumbnail you wanna do by putting your name in there. And then once you've made the thumbnail, you pop the link to the file in the Google Drive. And I see some people have gotten started. That is super awesome. You're going to try and vary which template you're using and which color scheme you're using. They don't all need an image. If you do use an image, try and find an image that does not require a credit or and is a, a free and open source. I've linked to some potential image sources in the project post. And another thing, if you don't get a chance, let's say you claim, you know, you put your name next to 10 thumbnails today, 10, 10 lessons today, and you don't get a chance to do them all, but you're planning to, to wrap, finish, or to come back tomorrow and, and do them, just remove your name. Don't, don't, because you might forget, or maybe, you know, um, you know, just, just, you know, remove your name for now, if you don't get to them all, and then come back, uh, you're welcome to like, come back and pick this up and, and do more, but try and try not to leave your name hanging, hanging out there uh, for more than a day. Uh, Cause then we might not be sure like, are you coming back? Are you going to finish up? Or should we give that to someone else? And I see people are naturally doing what I would also suggest, which is maybe like, you know, skip some, ideally we'll do the most, we'll do, we'll get all the most recent courses done or, or recent lessons done. These lessons are all the ones at the top are all part of uh, the most recent courses. And so, you know, we, we're going to be featuring the most recent stuff as opposed to older stuff. So those are the higher priority than the older ones. Um, what else? I see people are already jumping. Yes. So Catherine, you had mentioned uh, the color variations, and I didn't know if you had touched base on where to change those because um, I was typing. Yes. In I Figma. Think, yes. I'll, okay. I'll show it again because it's it's sometimes a little bit tricky to find. 
So to, to find the color variation, you need to be, let me just see if this allows me to zoom in more. It only, it only allows me to zoom in on the middle part. You need to have selected the top level of the template. So you know how there's all these little triangles that open up and you can see what's within each template. Well, to find the color variation, your cursor, you need to have selected the top level of the um, of that template. So you're highlighting that and I'm in this one, it's, highlight, it's, it's circled in purple. And then on the right, under where it says the name of the template. So basically this is the name of the template, text block and guest write. And I think it has the word names. I cannot see it because um, Figma cuts it. Oh, there we go. So yeah, you can also this, click on the on the thumbnail itself too. Yes, exactly. It's just that when you yeah. click on the thumbnail, if you're clicking in the middle, yeah, you got to be careful. Right, you got to be you got to be careful. If you got one of these open, you might end up clicking on. But yes, if you click towards the outer edge of the of the template, exactly like Laura just said, you will have selected the template itself. And then on the right, in the right hand panel, where you see the name of the template, just below that, you'll see the word color, and there's this little drop down with the four color options and it's for most of them it's defaulting to the pomegranate gradient and then you'll see the light gradient the blue and the dark blue and in terms of the text you know how i pasted here and i pasted the text okay well if i pasted the name of the course there you could, there's another way to do this if for some reason you want to um, edit it down here you can paste your text just below the color selections, you have a box called text. Let me, let me find, let me find a different, looks weird, I'll, I'll find this again. You, you can paste it in this little box as well, instead of here. Uh, either way, there, there's, a, there's multiple ways to do some things in Figma. Um, okay, some excellent questions coming in. Um, I'm gonna answer Kel's one, Kel's first, because I'm, I'm in text mode here. If the text is long and gets cut off, can we make the image or text smaller? The short answer is, for design purposes, it's preferable if you can find another template where the text will fit. So you'll see here that, for example, this text is smaller than this text. So ideally, you would use a different template. Um, it is possible to make the text smaller, but we kind of want to have some quality control. And like, for example, if everyone starts making the text different sizes, maybe we're going to end up text, which is too small to read. Um, it is it is tricky though. Use I'd say use your best judgment. Ideally use a different template, uh, but it is possible to change the text size. Just try and remember to change it back to whatever it was before so that the defaults stay the same for the next one. Um, does that answer your question, Kel? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so someone wants me to go over how to replace the image with an image from Pexels, and yes, for, with good reason, because I didn't really show that well. So let me just, okay, so this is, I've got the image here, block, box red. Okay, I'm just preparing a, an actual image to better show you. Okay, so <clears throat> what you do is you click on the picture. So that's the first thing you do, you click on the picture. And then actually, I just discovered that by double clicking, it opened up the image vertical component to open the image component within that. <laughs> because to change the picture, you have to see this little landscape icon. I realize on your screen, it might be very small, but it's sort of the classic image of like a mountain and a cloud, that sort of graphic symbol. So if you don't see it, go on the left in this panel on the left where you see image vertical or whatever it's called in any other template it might be called image i think they're all they're mostly all called image vertical um some of them might be called something else oh that's called editor because it's a fixed one um but going back here you you can open up this little triangle and then click on the word image once you click on the word image on the right you're going to see this section called fill and you're going to see another um, another word called image 
and you're going to click on this. And I realized, Cal, I, I only answered the text part of your question. So we'll look at the image part of your question while I'm doing this. You click on this. You'll see there are a bunch of settings here. The main one you're going to want to do is just to swap the image. You're in most cases not going to want to be messing around with exposure and all that. You could if your image is not great and you want to tweak it a little bit outside of a graphics program. I'm going to click choose image and now I'm going to select. I actually now I have a um, I got that image from Pexels and I'm going to select it. Okay, so this is the image from Pexels. And you can see here, you can't, you can't really move it around like you can in other programs. So if it's not taking the portion of the image that you want, the, you know, one thing you could do is you can edit it in a graphics program, a very basic graphics program that you have built in, like on a Mac, there's preview on a PC, maybe someone who uses a PC knows the name of the, uh, if there's a standard image editing program on a PC, um, you can do it there. There are some, a few things you can fiddle with here. Oh, thank you. Neela was saying Photo P is a nice online editor. Excellent. I know there's also Canva, but maybe Canva is more for creating graphics rather than editing graphics. I'm not sure. Maybe someone who uses Canva can answer. There is a drop down here that you can use if to see if it gives you a better effect. <clears throat> for example, Fit, Fit will actually put the whole image into the space you have. In general, we don't want to use this one because again, for consistency reasons, we want the image to be a vertical image. So in general, you're not going to want to use fit because that creates a whole different look and it doesn't look great. Um, crop does other things. You can crop the image. So in, in general, you really do want it to stay as fill. But under some circumstances, you might want to use the other options. In general, no. <clears throat> and in terms of Kel's question about can we make the image smaller, that probably would be something you would need to do in a graphics editor. I don't think there's any sort of real resizing options here. Like you can't, um, you know, like in, in the WordPress editor, you can resize things. I don't really see a way to do that in Figma. Maybe there's someone who knows Figma really well and who <laughs> says, yes, there is a way to resize in Figma in this context. I don't, I mean, there is 100% here. Let's see, I mean, this will resize. No, it didn't, it didn't work. I would I say- I think we have, um, there's certain boundaries that they set up parameters yeah. Uh, yeah. within the thumbnails. So those yeah. are things that we just don't have control over. Yeah. Laura added in Microsoft Photo Viewer Editor can resize on a PC. Excellent, thank you. I'm sure. That's yeah, it's just the Photo Photo Viewer um, has editing tools um, that I use. Excellent. Um, Stanford saying you can change the frame to resize. I'm not seeing how to do that, but anyway, you can play around. the The idea, the thing to keep in mind is that the whole point of this tool is to have consistencies, consistency across all the thumbnails with some variation in which templates you use and which color which color scheme you use, we're calling them color variations. Um, but apart from that, outside of that, we're trying to keep things more or less consistent. So Jean is saying, you're in Figma's thumbnail generator. In the window is teeny tiny thumbnail, thumbnails of the color palette series and editable images. So if you use, I don't know if you're on a Mac or a PC, but if you're on a PC, if you go Control plus, and if you're on a, a Mac, you can do Command Plus or, whoops, sorry, at the top right, you have Zoom In, Zoom Out, Zoom to Fit. Okay, on a Mac, it would be Command Plus to Zoom In and Out or this top Zoom tool here. We're at 25%. You can Zoom Out. So if, if everything looks really tiny like this, you might be at a very small number here. You might be really, really zoomed out try zooming to 50% or just pressing command, command, um, command plus to zoom in and make things bigger until you can see things well. The panels on the left and the right, I am not sure. I don't, I don't see a way to enlarge the panels on the right. And no, left. you can't. That's my little pet peeve is that, <laughs> uh, I, I need to make it bigger and it's, it's so hard. Yes. Um, the, the other little tool is the hand up at the top in the black toolbar. When you click yeah. to that, then you can move your the whole page around. 
you get to different thumbnails. So the, the hand and the uh, the little arrow are some great tools and that's um, a control H and a control, control, what's the other one? Um, control V is your arrow and then control uh -huh. H is so. So, okay, so Jean's all set, that did it. Great, excellent. And Stanford agrees that Figma has some accessibility issues, meaning uh, the not yes. the size of these panels not being able to be <laughs> changed to being one of them. Yes, I think we all agree, um, especially perhaps those of us with older eyeballs, I don't know, um, <laughs> or, or, you know, vision, vision issues. Um, great, and another tip coming in, if you hold the space bar, you can drag with the ruler arrow yeah i'm not doing that but anyway i'm probably doing something wrong but thank you that sounds extremely helpful and i don't know why it's not working for me maybe it's i'm just probably doing something wrong but thank you i'm sure it'll work for other people i love all these tips coming in um what else what else? yeah holding down the, yeah, uh, the me, space bar creates the, the hand that's what it was on my on my pc Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so I'm able to hold down the space bar and use my mouse. For some reason, the yeah. arrow keys are not working for me. I mean, yeah, the arrow keys, yeah, okay. it wasn't there. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, there's different ways to get, I, I found, for me, I found Figma has a, quite a learning curve. Like I've, <laughs> it's taken a while to get used to it. And even now, obviously I'm I'm learning a lot of things as, as I do things. But I don't know, hopefully, you know, the idea here is that watching this happen once or twice, watching watching us do things will, if you're a visual person like me, help clarify how to do it. Because it's one thing to have the steps listed out and try and follow the steps, and it's another to actually see it happening. Um, so another thing I'll just go over again, I know I mentioned it, but is to make sure to remove the person's face. We're not going with faces or names. So, you know, you might have to open the panels to find that. So it's in some places it's called speaker, in some places it's called faces. It depends on whether it's just the face or the face and the name. You can use this little teeny tiny eyeball to toggle that off. See how it's zooming a little more. Um, toggle that on and off. Leave the WordPress logo. If you have, if if you're using a version of the template that has WordPress.org, leave that there and just remove the faces. So again, so for example, <clears throat> in this component, this component is guest and W. So if I were to toggle this whole thing off, I'd lose the WordPress.org. So you have to make sure to go inside, select just the faces and turn that off. And then this becomes centered. So it's a, it's a little fiddly. Um, is there, good question has come in. Is there a specific resolution you want the files in? Here's the cool thing, the generator is all preset to have the export done at the right resolution and size and format. So you don't have to worry about that. So when you are ready with this template, like let's say, um, let's say this one's ready. Let me just remove the, uh, remove the speaker. Let's say this one's ready. If you scroll down, you'll see export, export text block and guest, right? So you click export and it's going to save the file pre you know, pre-done in the right format, the right size, the right resolution. So please don't change anything there. All we do want you to change is the name of the file because it will come out named something else and we want it to have the name of the course with the date. So yeah, so hopefully that answers that. Uh, it's quite, pre everything's preset in terms of format and resolution, et cetera. What else? Eileen has to head out. Goodbye, Eileen. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably that's probably it. You know, we're hoping to, let's see, how many do we need to make? There are a couple hundred lessons. I think <laughs> <laughs> once people are on a roll, hopefully it will go uh, along quicker. We're also, I'm trying to get some help from the community team. There are some community courses as, uh, as opposed to learning how to use WordPress. There's a whole bunch of things about community best practices. Um, okay, a couple of questions. Sherry was noticing the that, some, that some of the files have different file sizes. And I know, I know, 
I wouldn't worry about it. I, I am not sure why actually, maybe some, because if you look here, you see some of them, this is 3.1, um, that's 70, 77 kilobytes. That's interesting, that's a huge difference. I'm not sure why, um, but as far as we're concerned, you don't need to compress them or change the resolution or the size or anything like that. We're not, we're not worrying about that <laughs> moment. Um, are they being updated on WordPress.tv? We are, um, and we are prioritizing replacing them in two places right now, the learn.wordpress.org site and on YouTube. Later on, if we have more time, we will also do, um, you'll see there's a hidden column here, <laughs> wordpress.tv, but given limited time, we're not gonna do that right now. We just, there's so much to do that we're gonna, we're gonna leave that aside for now, but perhaps in the future. And certainly all the newer courses we do have the new thumbnails on WordPress.tv as well. Um, yes, Sherry says, as long as Figma is doing what we need, I'm not concerned, just an observation. I think it's an excellent observation, actually. I should, I should probably inquire about that with the, with the, um, the folks who created this generator as to why. Um, it, is, it is a bit odd, but yeah, we won't worry about it for now. Um, but yeah, Laura, maybe if you wouldn't mind making a note for me, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll follow up with that after. Thank you. Because it is a bit strange. But yeah, so we are planning to replace thumbnails on the site and on YouTube, uh, but not going back on WordPress.tv for now, just because it's, it's a ton of work. We already have a lot of work <laughs> to do. And uh, yeah, so we're focusing on that. What else? We've got 10 more minutes left. Has anyone run into any issues? Has anyone tried to do something and it's not working as you expected? No, so far so good. Um, maybe there's someone who's not yet in Slack, but hopefully hopefully everyone's able to get into Slack. Oh, Nilo is saying about the file size, it's just that solid, solid colors compress way better in PNG. Oh, that's a really good point. So maybe anything with an image um, is gonna be larger because the images don't compress as well as, as uh, just colors. That's an excellent point. And yeah, it could depend on the images we use. I don't know how Figma handles the images that we pop in there, if it's doing any compression at all or anything. And uh, yeah, this this is being recorded. So if you need to rewatch it later, absolutely. That's, uh, it's uh, normal and expected that you might have to rewatch some of these steps. I know there's a lot of steps and you know, it, it is, the steps are also here. So if you also rewatch the video and want the steps in, in writing, they're here as well. I'm just looking to see if there's anything else I might've missed, but I think I put everything here. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Nilo's giving an example of a file that's just 77 uh, kilobytes because it's all shapes and solid colors. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So it is the images that are making the file sizes bigger. Sherry's not seeing the theme switch option. If you're not seeing it, let me give you the um, URL. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm not sure if um, people who aren't part of the training team have that option. Oh, okay. Okay. Good point. So sorry if I, yeah, that's a good point. I, um, so I've, pl I popped the URL in, so it, it's the regular URL and it just has question mark new dash theme equals one on the end. And if you don't want to pre be previewing anymore, you make that one equals zero. That's something called a query string and that will toggle you back to the old site. So let me just, um, yeah, that'll that'll work. Yeah, um, even though you're not logged in. Yeah, let me. And that's the that's the root of the site. I just shortened the URL there. The, the previous URL was the lessons page. So yeah, so even if you're not logged in, um, these URLs should work. And yeah, you can go back and forth and see what what things are going to look like when this launches. And when this launches, I'm, I'm planning to do an online workshop with a tour of the new site. So that'll be something to look forward to. Hopefully at the end of next month, <laughs> after this launches, if all goes as scheduled, you'll be able to see the new launch, uh, see the new site. Yeah, let's let's look at replacing an image again because it, is it, it, because it isn't super obvious. So let's replace Wes here. So you click on the image if that doesn't work, you look on the left-hand side for the component that says image. So let's say this is closed. Let's say you're in this template and this is 
the triangle is closed. You're not seeing the stuff inside this component. You click the little triangle to open it. And then you look for the component inside that one, inside the template with the word image again. And then you open that one up. It's like a nested doll series, right? You just open, open, open until you see the word, just the word image and the little landscape image graphic icon, all right? Once you see that and there's no more triangles to the left of it, then you come over here on the right and in this panel, you look for the panel called fill, the section called fill, click on the little tiny picture and the word image. And then if you hover over the picture that's there, the default picture, click choose image, choose your new image, and it pops in. All right, let me know if that goes okay. I know it is quite fiddly because there's a lot of things to open up. <laughs> thing inside a thing inside a thing. So yeah, when in doubt, open it up. In a way, again, the parallel here is uh, list view in the block editor, right? If you, if, you, if you look at list view, you have to open these elements the same way, you know, you might have a, a, um, a group block with a paragraph block inside that or a button, a button block inside that. So it's, it's similar when you use the list view, you have to open up these little triangles or carrots, they're also called, called carrots, uh, not, a, not a carrot that you eat, but like a 10 carat gold spelled that way. Um, so yeah, it's similar to that. To see the image that you need to replace, you need to open up all these elements. So Jean, if you have a chance, if you're, if you're giving it another shot, let me know if you're able to try that. And if anyone has trouble with this or has questions, if you're inspired to dive in and help out with this after this call, which I hope you are, uh, please feel free to pop into the training channel and ask me a question, Laura a question. There's other people there um, who's, who have used the tool before. And um, once you start getting the hang of it, maybe you'll be able to answer other people's questions and we can all help each other. Um, and eventually getting this site looking the best that it can look. And I'm super excited to see things coming together and see the cute thumbnails coming in and uh, it's looking better and better. So thank you to everyone who has helped so far with all these little images. I think it's really making a difference because the current site, the current site, the thumbnails were all a dark blue or like a medium blue with white text. And it just looked, it looked quite bland. So this is going to really help jazz things up and make it give a little variety. Yes, Jean's got it. Awesome. Excellent. Happy to hear. Yeah, it takes it took me a few tries. It's 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 very hidden. I, I also showed this to someone who's used Figma a lot and he did not know this was there and was like, oh my goodness, that's how you change an image. So, you know, Figma has a learning curve. <laughs> Some of these things are not obvious at all. So yeah, so if you if you get stuck on something or um, you know, you watch watch the video back and it's still not clear, feel free to, to pop into the channel. Stanford's pointing out something interesting. Figma requires nesting for a lot of it to work as automations. Okay, I did not know that. So Figma's a, Figma's a, special, a special creature with special requirements. And it's good to know a little bit about the behind the scenes there. I was really not familiar with it at all. Any other questions before we wrap up? We are right on time. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you everybody for being here today. Thank you for all the really good questions and thank you in advance for any, any thumbnail help you're able to give to make this site look, look great and fun and colorful. And thank you so much, Laura, for being uh, quick on the chat with all the links and, and helping answer all the questions. I super appreciate it. And I will be posting this video as soon as I can get it um, uploaded. I'll be posting it in the meetup comments and then you can get to it from there but it should be going up on wordpress.tv hopefully in the next couple of days so you can rewatch it so yeah thanks again for everybody to everybody and we'll see you hopefully at the next workshop bye bye <laughs>